RJ, thanks for joining. Looking at Harmony Protocol's roadmap, can you provide a short summary of how these upgrades will improve the Harmony network? Yeah, sure. So for the Harmony Protocol roadmap, we actually have three main categories for all the updates. So if you look at the uh, protocol roadmap, we have feature and tools, and we have security and decentralization, and also efficiency and performance. So for the uh, feature and tools, like it include like Quashard smart contract messaging protocol that allows like applications to talk to each other um, among all the shards. Like for example, if you have an application on shard one, you can tap the liquidity of DEXs on shard zero, something like that. Um, of course, we also plan to uh, implement account abstraction so that more type of uh, transactions, including smart contract transactions or even gasless transaction um, can be enabled on the network. For security and decentralization, it's all about making the network stronger and more secure and more decentralized. Uh, we're gonna revamp some of the features about slashing and also about the validator requirements so that there's less room for collusion and less room for uh, attacks. Of course, we're gonna gradually uh, kind of and more further decentralize our network by reducing the number of validators that Harmony runs. Right now, we only run 10% of the node, but gradually um, and eventually, we're gonna um, basically put all the node to external validator, right? And the Harmony will control basically zero node for the network. And for efficiency and port performance, of course, we're always aiming to improve the finality of the blocks. And we're also um, increasing the block synchronization speed so that um, all of the RPC node can always catch up to the latest block and serve the latest fresh data to all the developer and users. And in, this, in the meantime, we're gonna uh, update some of the cryptography libraries like the BLS library which is used by all the validators to sign the blocks to reach consensus. And once we upgrade the library with a faster implementation, it could totally like uh, speed up the consensus process and give us a faster finality. So that's just a, like a brief summary of all the uh, kind of major aspect of the protocol roadmap, but we can definitely uh, dig deeper uh, into each of the aspect Perfect, thank you. I know that we've seen a lot of discussions revolving around cross-shard messaging, and I just wanna ask, how will it improve Harmony's position as a gaming blockchain? How exactly does this messaging work, and what are the barriers that you're facing with implementing this function? Sure, that's a good question. So Harmony as the sharding-based blockchain, actually we're the first launched uh, sharding and proof-of-stake blockchain, and we launched on 2019. Right now we have four shards and uh, we actually currently support transferring native one token across shard. But uh, one of the problem right now is um, the applications launched on different shard, especially the smart contract cannot kind of uh, call each other from the other shards. And this kind of prevented uh, applications to launch on different shards and basically talk to each other especially in the case uh, right now, most of the applications like uh, DeFi applications or game applications are launched on shard zero and all the liquidities are also in shard zero. So if we're gonna expand our footprint to other shard and uh, let more app game applications to launch on the other shard, we need to support the cross shard smart contract messaging protocol so that applications that's living in like shard one can directly call the DEXs on shard zero and utilize or take advantage of the liquidity from shard zero. In this way, there's there won't be kind of a broken liquidity across different shards. Like application can only access to the liquidity in the in the same shard. That's that's definitely gonna hurt the ecosystem. So with the cross shard messaging protocol, you will be a asynchronous protocol where applications can send a message from one shard to the other shard and also uh, re like expect a response from the other shard uh, in an asynchronous way. And this basically break the barrier 
of all these shards and make all these shards kind of um, uh, composable with each other and uh, basically fully kind of utilize the full power of uh, Harmony blockchain in the sharded network. Yeah. What type of steps does Harmony need to incorporate for ensuring the security and safety of liquidity from shard zero to game operating on maybe another shard? Yeah, though, so that's basically uh, lie in the design of the Quashar messaging protocol. So in our network, we are uh, basically a heterogeneous uh, kind of uh, sharded network, um, which basically means uh, all the other all the shards are kind of trusting each other and they have similar uh, kind of setting. They have the same kind of security guarantee. All these shards. Uh, are fully secure and they can trust each other and directly talk to each other. So all the messages sent from one shard can directly um, verifiable and directly verified by the receiving shard. So they can trust that whatever uh, messages or asset sent from another shard can be kind of directly uh, credited to, to my own shard without concerning about security or double spending. So uh, we also have a lot of mechanism to make sure that the Quashar message can be eventually um, kind of um, processed. And if, if there is any kind of gas fee concern on the destination shard, we allow the users to kind of add more gas to the Quashar uh, transaction so that eventually it can be processed on the destination shard. So this mechanism basically makes sure the asset transfer between shard can be fully secure and fully um, guaranteed the de delivery for the asset. And there won't be any uh, losses of assets during cross shard transfer. Another question here, will Harmony transaction speeds still be operating at a two second finality even when cross shard communication has been set up? Yeah, of course, all the uh, all the shards are actually running um, the current consensus. And cross-shard messaging protocol is kind of a new feature that's add-on on the existing network protocol. And it's not related to the consensus or it's not related to the base layer consensus block production or anything. It's kind of a, um, a layer on top, like, just like a VRF, the feature of VRF. It's actually not adding any burden on the consensus uh, and the block production. So all these shards are going to maintain the two-second finality for sure. Um, there won't be any um, kind of delay or further kind of slowdown of consensus after uh, we enable the Quashart protocol. As we explore more gaming and the growth of the ecosystem, can you explain what an SDK is and how that makes Harmony more developer friendly? Yeah, sure. So basically SDK is a, a software development toolkit. It's kind of a set of software tools that developer use uh, that can help them to easily build their applications. So in the context of gaming, a game SDK is basically a piece of software library and uh, tools for game developers to easily build their games. And for our kind of game SDK, you will also support the functionality for developer, for game developers to easily kind of interact with Harmony blockchain. Things like checking the balance, sending transactions, um, or listening for a certain event to happen. And this kind of part of the feature will interact or kind of be integrated with the traditional game development uh, features so that the game functionality can be smoothly and tightly integrated with the interaction of blockchain. And that basically help all the uh, game file or blockchain game developer to easily build game applications on Harmony network. Looking at the security component of the roadmap, we see a major focus on validators and their role within protecting the network. Can you maybe provide some insight for the community on what these upgrades will do? Yeah, for sure. So uh, our validators are essential for the ongoing and running and the security and also decentralization of Harmony Network. 
So the proof of stake mechanism and all the uh, validator uh, related uh, logic, we actually put a lot of um, emphasis on the security and soundness of those designs. So for um, the validator related changes in the roadmap, they're mostly focused on making sure there is less room for attacks and less room for collusion among validators and basically also um, increase the decentralization of the network. So things like slashing, slashing rules. And right now the current design uh, has the potential problem of um, kind of the slash reporter and the slash kind of um, uh, the validator who, rep who recorded the slash, they can possibly coll collude to kind of gain an advantage or gain the slash token from, from this slash record. So with the protocol uh, roadmap changes, we're gonna upgrade this kind of part of logic so that collusion is not possible. And also we're gonna change the block reward logic uh, for how to distribute the block reward and how to integrate the transaction fee in the reward to the validator so that they are more encouraged to include more transactions to make uh, to basically make the user's transaction to be included as fast as possible. And so things like that, we actually work closely with our uh, research DAO people with a team called the Common Prefix, and they're top researchers from the top university in the world, including Stanford and some in the Euro European uh, University. So we already had the report about all the uh, kind of uh, security improvement uh, for our network. So this some, some of these proto roadmap changes are basically um, based on this um, research analysis on our network features. In the final section here, we see a major focus on block and state synchronization. Can you elaborate on Aragon and its impact, the optimization steps the team is taking for these? Yes, yeah, so for uh, block synchronization and state synchronization is kind of a process for new um, nodes in the network to catch up to the latest block, right? Right now, our network already processed like um, more than tens, tens of millions of blocks. And for the new node to join the network, either a validator or uh, just a full node as a client to, for the network, they need to like download all the blocks and uh, process all the blocks to, to synchronize to the latest block so that they can keep up with the uh, new block production. And this process is actually very heavy and some of the weak machines may find it very hard to synchronize uh, very fastly to catch up with the network. And that's actually a potential problem in uh, some of the RPC node where they sometimes fall out of sync then they cannot service the fresh data to the developers. And for this block sync uh, synchronization uh, improvement is basically to make the synchronization process a lot faster and make the nodes uh, always catch up to the latest block and never fall out of sync. And one of the potential improvement is uh, basically piggybacking on some of the other existing um, um, uh, GitHub repo, and they ca it's called the Aragon. It's basically a faster implementation of some of the Ethereum compatible uh, logics like uh, block synchronization, like RPC layer. So with the incorporation of some of the uh, Aragon um, features, we can vastly improve the block synchronization and also vastly improve the efficiency of our RPC services so that we, our network can run faster and our RPC can serve potentially five times more uh, requests than right now. Well, it was great talking to you. Thank you so much for joining in and doing this Q&A with us. Yeah, me too. Thanks for like uh, having this uh, conversation for the community.